this summer. <laughs> So my name is Tomas Martinez. Welcome to another edition of TM3 Impact. I am the owner of Luxury Home Magazine. This amazing show is brought to you by Luxury Home Magazine and Spanish Grove Academy. If you're looking for a place for your little ones to learn and be immersed in Spanish, you need to take them to Spanish Grove Academy. Today, I, we are blessed with a friend Someone who you know, if you're in San Antonio and you've been in San Antonio for any length of time, you know my next guest. His name is Joe Caruso. Joe, thank you for being here, my friend. I hope they know me. Oh, they, they do. Know that's okay. Yeah. That's quite all right. Thanks for having me. Fun yes. To be here. Well, listen, I, I have to do this because, uh, you know, I typically like to do a little bit of research, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I, I, I was, Gabe and I were talking, by the way, shout out to Gabe. Way to go, Gabe. Hi, Gabe. People Gabe's, know Gabe? Yeah, Gabe, Gabe has got this all set up. He's my, um, Who you know. Who listens to this podcast, by the way? Who's that? Who listens to this? Man, you know what? We got all <laughs> kinds of amazing listeners know, that listen to this. It's impossible to know, right? <laughs> it is. By the way, can it I is. throw a, a, a podcast fact out? Please. Do you know how many, what is the average number of podcasts that, yeah. a, that a new podcaster will do before they throw in the towel, before they give Ooh. up? Ooh. I'd say at least seven to ten. This is, you're you're right yeah. in the ballpark. It's yeah. it's uh it's twelve. Twelve. This okay. Is, this is uh kind of old um, information. Yeah. Not current, up to date. Yeah. Um, but it's probably still somewhat relevant. Yeah. I know I started and then I stopped because it's uh it's time consuming. It is. But he, here's here's the thing. I, I will tell you for for Gabe and I when we kind of when I hired Gabe as my digital content creator when we first started getting into this. We had the idea we're going to make a podcast, and here's my honest opinion on it. If one person listens to this podcast, wow. I'm okay. You said the bar. Alone. Seriously, I, did, hey. didn't I not say that, Gabe? I literally said that because here's my thing, Joe. At the end of the day, if one person gets something out of it, yeah, I'm okay with it. Well, that's good because one is greater than zero. It is. That's that, it. That is, that I is love that. I love that quote from Gary Vee. I just it's love hard that quote. To argue that. That fact right? right. So here's the thing. If we get one listener, Joe, I yeah. did my job. Okay. But I'm, well, hoping, you know what? I'm hoping for two. I've listened. I, I, <laughs> let me be honest. Yeah. I have not listened to an entire podcast, yeah. but that's okay. Yeah. I mean, as you know, I was in radio for many years. Yes. Nobody listens to the whole show. No. They're in, they're out. That's but right. The great thing about podcasts is it's on demand. I can that's always right. go back. Yep. And listen, you know, anytime I want. When you're ready. So I got to do this, Joe, because okay. I just, and I, I know, know what you're going to, you're going to be on. uncomfortable with this, but just, just stick with me. Okay. I oh, know boy. you're going to be uncomfortable with this. I'm an All open right. Book. So I have to read Joe's bio just so that we can set the tone for the specialness of who Joe Caruso is. So Joe Caruso, the Sinatra of South Texas, period. If you've not heard this gentleman sing, you are missing out out he is fantastic we've hired him for multiple events with luxury Home magazine so that's just the you know the first part but now i got to go all the way back um full service agency um, with digital audio video media training um here's some highlights has 25 years in radio television and advertising he's a voiceover talent global national regional began his radio career in chicago I stink and love Chicago. I'll be there in a month. He also had his career <laughs> in TV on a morning show uh, featuring an, NB, an, uh, an NBC station in Louisville, assisted in launching and developing what we know as Great Day SA, which has been a massive, massive success. Uh, produced over a thousand hours of top rated television, live television. That's crazy. 25 year, uh, excuse me, worked at the top 25 ad agency in Chicago. At eight, yep, eight, top 25. Top 25 sure. ad agency in Chicago. Theater graduate, performer, vocalist, a descendant of Enrico Caruso. Yeah, someone in the family, you know, I can't provide documents, but, yeah. but someone in the family did the ancestry, that's very hot right now, Yeah, and said to me, you know, you're related to Enrico Caruso. I said, what? Yeah. This is great for marketing, if nothing else. Absolutely. Um, so I didn't get all the information, Yeah. so <laughs> I'm, you know, hey. maybe someday I'll know that for sure. That's all right. That's all right. And, and, and obviously you've worked with 
uh, American Express Global, the PGA Tour, Wells Fargo, Porsche, Jaguar, Exxon, Chick-fil-A, and among others. Whew. My goodness. Yeah. That's Go stinking on. cool. Joe, yes. I'm fired up to have you here. So let's, I just want to start off right off the bat. You've got radio. I mean, you started out in radio. Tell me about your first radio gig. I knew very young that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, I grew up, as you mentioned, in Chicago. And it was, at the time, the, arguably, the greatest radio market in the country, yeah. if not the world. Um, we just had the best personalities there. And so I knew that I want to do that. I want to be yeah. the guy in the radio. Yeah. Uh, as I used to say when I was little. So The guy in the radio. The guy in the radio, I love it. yeah. How, how did, <laughs> so what was the question? So tell me about your first gig. How'd you get your first gig? My first gig? Um, yeah. Well, you mentioned that I worked at a top 25 ad agency in Chicago. It was family owned. My dad was the president. Yeah. And um, he got me in, believe it or not, to see at that time my idol to actually go in to his morning show, which was, it's, it's a crazy story. How, how old were you at this time? Time. Uh, I was probably eighth grade, seventh, okay. seventh right. or eighth grade. How yep. old are you there? Yeah, but, uh, 13, 14. Okay, yep. yeah. So we go down into the city, and uh, this guy had just started. He's, he's now legendary. He's in the radio hall. Everybody knows this guy. Do you remember okay. Disco Demolition in Chicago where they blew up all yeah. the disco records? He was yeah. the guy responsible for that. That was his deal. <laughs> that was his wow. deal, right? okay. Okay, so... Um, so we go down to the radio station and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it was an, an incredible experience because yeah. not everybody gets to do this. No. Um, especially with this guy, Steve Dahl is his name. Okay. Uh, he, he used to do characters on the air. So it was kind of like you were, you know, really going behind the scenes. It wasn't like you were just going to see any old talk show. Right. The guy was doing characters. And so you're really, really behind the curtain. Right. You know? Right. And um, anyway, long story short, um, after doing that, I ended up, because of my dad, getting an internship all no. those years later at that same station. With him? No, no, no. He was he gone. Was gone. He was okay. gone at that okay. time. But it was at WLS, which okay. is one of the legendary, you know, three, three call letters, yeah. WLS, yeah. which stood for uh, and still does the world's largest store, Sears. Wow. Uh, yeah. So... Um, Oh, okay, how can I like keep this kind of short? Um, so I ended up getting a job as an intern there. That led to the last day of my internship yeah. at, at legendary WLS. Yeah. Um, I walked into the uh, the program director, you know, vice president, general manager. I mm -hmm. uh, walked into those guys and said, you know, thank you. It's been great being here. And they said, well, we can't lose you, which I'm sure they said to everybody. Right. But it just so happened that on the last day yeah. of my internship. Someone who had been at that station for a long time that I had heard when I was a kid okay. growing up listening to the station left. They, they quit that day to go and on. This was an on-air talent? This was no, a, she or, was behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, got it. Okay. Uh, but she was, she was on air from time to time. Okay. Uh, and yep. they would certainly talk about her a lot. So she went on to do other things, and I said, well, I just heard you know, in the hallway that uh, Beth Newhall's not going to be here anymore. Yeah. If you want that job, you've got it. Wow. I took it on the spot. And how old were you at that time, I Joe? was a freshman in college. Okay. It was, it was my summer internship. So 20, was, 19, 20? Something okay. like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 19, I think. Yeah. Um, so... You know, then I had to go home and explain to my parents that... Uh, oh, you're going to drop out? Yeah. That, oh, wow. That, well, it's... It, you just, what are you going to do? opportunity knocks. Yeah. What I mean, this do? is big. That's a big deal. So yeah. I end up taking it. I don't know how that all went down and how my parents were okay with it. Right. So, <laughs> um, so I ended up getting that job and I really got to know all yeah. of my heroes. Wow. And that led to me getting a job. So I was a job as a producer now. Yeah. Uh, under the, in the research department. Okay. So I would answer the request lines. I would mark down, you know, what the requests were to see what was coming in, what people were interested in. Yeah. Uh, so it was a music based format. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it was actually two stations, the AM and the FM. So I was kind of straddling. Oh, wow. Both stations. But then I, I, um, really heavily migrated to the FM station. Okay. 
because the AM music powerhouse was kind of winding down and yep. eventually that would go on to become a talk station. Yeah. Um, so my interest was, was the music side of it and being, uh, being an on-air personality, disc jockey for lack of a better term. Right. And uh, I ended up producing the FM show and working okay. with a guy who, okay, we'll get there. I, yeah. I ended up working with later. Yeah. But um, anyway, meeting all those guys, they put me in touch with other people in the radio industry who needed new talent okay. in smaller markets. Okay. Because you, you can't start in Chicago. you got to get out there and oh. start small, okay. learn your craft, cut your teeth. Yeah. So that's what happened. I went out and I took a job in the middle of nowhere. Oh, wow. So you end up leaving this oh, job. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you wouldn't have been able to get on air. No, no. Really? You got to go out and do it every day. You got to be on the air every day. Learn who you are wow. on the air, which is basically yourself. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know that. They yeah. Put on, you know, this. They have a persona. They have a persona. They talk like this. Hey, how you doing, everybody? And they say, why do you talk like that? Because yeah. it's how it sounds good like this. <laughs> no, it really doesn't. So when you go to small towns, you're right. hearing, you know, at least back in the day, you would hear guys who were trying to figure it out. You yeah. Know? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and make all the mistakes. So then you move. So no one would hear it. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. And where'd you go? Where'd you go? First radio uh, station where you're on air talent. Champaign, Illinois. Cham okay. Champaign-Urbana, which is the home okay. of the University of Illinois. Okay. And I had friends down there. So it was like I was back in okay. school. I lived on campus. You know, I just wasn't going to class. Yeah. I was in radio school. I'd go to the radio station every night. Yeah. And I'd do the all-night show from oh my midnight goodness. till 6 in the morning. Oh, yeah. my <laughs> oh, yeah. goodness. You talk about a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Brutal. But it didn't take long till I was promoted to nights. Okay. To, you know, it took about three months. Okay. Um, so then I'm doing the night show, and I was there for one year, from April 1st to April 1st, believe okay. me. I remember specifically. How can you forget that? Yeah. So then I move up a little bit to Springfield, Illinois. Same company ah. hires me to go do morning drive, which is where you yeah. want to be. That's where yeah. the, the personality happens. Yep. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do a comedy show, a variety show. I wanted to interview people, as yeah. well as, you know, play a couple tunes, and that's yeah. all part of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so from there, I ended up getting a job and working with the guy, this is I was explaining yeah. earlier, who I was producing his show on WLS-FM. We teamed up okay, and now did a morning show in Louisville, Kentucky. Ah, okay. Yep. And the guy who hired us used to work at WLS. Okay. So it was all kind of, you know, in the family. So yeah. All right. So long story, even longer. Ten years after all that, ten yeah. years after I got my first job, yeah, I had gone to let's see, uh, from Champaign to Springfield to Louisville to San Antonio to Chicago. Um, oh, to back to Chicago. Ten, that was a ten-year span. Oh my god! So ten years later, so I you got to pay your dues in radio. Yeah, but I got hired at the same station I started at. Oh at WLS, snap! Right, which doesn't wow, happen. yeah. So it came full circle 10 years later. And some of the same people were still there. And you got to walk in as on-air talent this yeah. day? Yes. Oh, snap. You get it. Yes. Wow. I know. And so were you doing top 40? What were you doing in Chicago at that time? Uh -oh. You got to be careful what you wish for. Uh-oh. Yeah. Um, no, I was doing country because country started to explode. Oh, And I never... Gee. I know. I never... Thought, but that's what brought me here to San Antonio. You are not a country the guy. The first time I was. No. A guy had to talk me into it. Say, are you said, serious? Look, this is not a country radio station. Yeah. It's but a, we got to play it because. It's a top 40 station. Yeah. That okay. just happens to play. Yeah. Country music. But not the country you're thinking. Yeah. There, these country stations were huge. But they yeah. were playing Garth Brooks. They yeah. were playing oh, uh, Reba yeah. McIntyre. They yeah. were playing. It was None the pop hits at that time. I mean, these were the epic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're these right. are epic songs. You're right. I mean, Garth launched an entire yep. an industry. Yep. Um, but we weren't playing that stuff. We yeah. were playing artists had no, they had never heard of, like Tim McGraw. Uh, no yeah. one knew who that was. Yeah, and he's huge. Yeah, Faith yeah, yeah, Hill. Yeah. Nobody knew yeah. who that was. Right. Um, so we were the third country station in this market. There were the three, the, the two mainstays, Y100. And KJ one. See that KJ that, that blows my mind. So that there here. was a point in time where there were like country was not played like 
It just it just wasn't it didn't have a, uh, the appeal on the radio like well, it is here today. it did it did in Texas oh it did in Texas okay yeah got it. but but not, not in Chicago no no not in Nashville yeah yeah that's interesting so you I, I gotta I gotta in my mind so you go to Chicago you move back and you're spinning country tunes I know in an area that you're trying basically trying to grow this market well they had there was one station that had the monopoly. And in Chicago, were, yes. Okay. And they they build themselves as the most successful or the largest yeah. country station in the country just yeah. because of the amount of listeners that they had. Yeah. So we were going in trying to just if we could just half their audience, we'd yeah. be fine. Yeah. So we were the young upstart. Yeah. But we were doing things that they weren't doing. Okay. Because we were trying to make inroad. You know, we could. We, we yeah. were the young, hot. Yeah. Um, you upstarts. were the you were the millennials of that time. Right? Well, sort of. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah. So we went in there and just started stealing their audience. Ah, nice. And things were going great. But the owners, ABC yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the time, the classic rock monopoly became available. Uh, so they thought in their, you know, corporate's infinite wisdom. Yeah. Let's switch it up. Yeah. We, why don't we, let's get a monopoly going instead okay. of, you know, fighting Th- these guys yeah. and and uh, you know bearing down yeah. there, let's let's flip it and they did and that was that and what did 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 it end up hurting the station switching? No, I mean that's the, it, the problem with that station was it had flipped so many times. One ah. of the secrets is you know not doing that. Yeah, you, you got to have courage and your conviction and just go just for it. Stay the course. Yeah, stay the course. So. And I would imagine in radio there there is a there's a chasing that is that happens right. You're chasing revenue. You're chasing this advertisement, right? Oh, that's like that's what it's all about. It's in, the advertising. It's business. that advertising dollar. That's so what you're it just is. chasing, chasing, chasing. Oh, we got to yeah. switch. I mean, you've, we've seen a lot of that in San Antonio. A lot of massive switches. Um, in terms of different stations, they're not you know? emotional about it. Yeah, they're oh not no, emo- you, you can't be when you're when you're you know in the business. Yeah, or if you're an entrepreneur, you can't be. It's hard not to be because it's a business based on feeling. You yeah. know, it's it's the performance business. You're performing. Yeah. you're surrounded with uh, people who are emotional based. Yeah, um, but the logical side. Yeah, is. Don't get emotional. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the market doesn't want it. Let's change it up and give them what they want. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. So now got, you have all this experience in radio. I love that. I was, I was telling Gabe, when you hear this dude's voice, you're going to, you're going to immediately close your eyes and, and you're going to think this guy needs to be on the radio. I thanks. mean, it's just, you have thanks. a radio voice. Well, thanks. Not that I you can't like be on TV. I'm not on the microphone. <laughs> right. How you doing guys? <laughs> All right, so let's go to this. I, I, have you heard the commercial for? I don't know what it's. For. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah. Can I mention? Can I mention? A, a, or do I? Please. Not want to. Yeah, it's mine. Mention Mitsubishi. Oh yes. Mention Mitsubishi. Cash. Who is that guy? Please tell me that's not you. No. Okay, I'm just making I sure. I want to smack him if I ever see him. <laughs> cash. Can you imagine that guy he, talking like that sure in real life? You sure it's not Chris Duell? Is he it goes Chris Duell? Can don't I get lie. some cash? No, Crystal is a nice guy. Okay, good. Nice guy. Oh, I, I, I'm not saying he wasn't. I, I like Crystal. Now, let's talk about this because you end up on TV for, uh, was that during your radio time when you were doing this, the, that morning show host? It started in Louisville. Yeah. yeah. I, we, were, we were the kings of radio there. I mean, yeah. It's Louisville. So. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not to say it wasn't a competitive market because right. it was. A lot of great talent right. you know, goes through there. It's kind of like San Antonio. Yeah. Talent comes and goes. Yeah. Not so much radio anymore. It's kind of a dying industry. Yeah. Or dad, if you will. Um, Shout but, out to podcasts. But certainly, right. Certainly TV <laughs> talent. Right. You know, they come and go in this market. Uh, it's a good springboard. Yeah. So uh, the Louisville was the same. So you would have a lot of good talent moving in and out of there. Yeah. Um, but we were able to, to go in there and uh, dominate, which is, you know, what we wanted to do. Nice. Because there's no shame in that. That's right. the goal. The goal is kill them. Yeah. Um, and uh, that led to, uh, believe it or not, I, I went out with a, a portable video camera. No. And just started doing some man on the street stuff. Oh, that's cool. And went into the TV station and presented it. You know, this green kid. I didn't know anything. And they yeah. said, this is good stuff. 
Yeah. We got to we got to go with this. And I ended up getting a spot on the five o'clock news. Oh, that's a couple times a week. Yeah. It was Joe Caruso's street talk. And I'd be out there asking people, you know, whatever the question of the day was or the question of the week. Yeah. And it was just fun. You know, we would just as you know, remember Leno used to go out on the street and talk to people. Not that I'm a fan, but um, it was that kind of a thing. It was lighthearted, you know, the lighter side. Yep. And you were getting real people on the air. And they were certainly taking advantage of my name. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, because you were on the radio, yeah. and they were mm-hmm. using that. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So then you, you come to San Antonio, and you launch Great Day SA. Just what, what do you think were the pieces where you were able to, because at that at, at morning shows, getting paid segments, yeah. that yeah. was a big deal. And it was wasn't. Edge. It was cutting edge. It was yeah. the, it, that was the beginning of like that error. And, uh, uh, that, and what year was that when you came here to start that? That was uh, let's see. Nice. It was uh, after two thousand. Okay. So probably two thousand three. Okay. Something like that. Okay. So you and now you're on the behind the scenes with this the, launching this. Is is that correct? Yeah. I was one of the the. Well, there weren't many of us. Let's see. There was yeah. Lou Parker, who was the original host. Okay. Uh, Luis Munoz was I the executive Luis. producer. Yep. Um, and then there was myself. I was the other producer. That was it. Yeah. I had two producers. Oh, wow. So I was the uh, senior producer. Yeah. And then we had our our one cameraman. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, not not at the station. Right, right, I mean, right, the right. one guy who would go out yeah. in the field. And yeah. Stuff. And then we had another reporter on the show. Um, Vanessa Macias, yeah. who yeah. you may know as well. Yeah. Um, and that was it. So th- there was really just five of us. Wow. Putting this thing, putting a live hour. Yeah. Of television. Every morning. Yeah. And, and so, we didn't know what we were doing either. You, so you guys, it's so great. So literally you created, it didn't exist. Great Day they didn't even exist. Well, they, it didn't exist. They okay. said, here's the idea. Okay. And it's going to be, a, you know, obviously the, the only reason to be on the air is yeah. to make revenue. Right. Um, and we knew from the get-go that some of the segments were going to be sold segments. Right. But it started out probably 70-30, meaning 70% of the show was entertainment value. Uh, yes. 30% was sold content. Okay. But, of course, you don't tell the you general don't know. public that. Yep. And yep. you still try to make those segments entertaining, even though right. they're sold. Right. Well, you know, you give them an inch and suddenly, you know, they... They see the money. They flipped it. <laughs> they, they com- now it's, it's it's the opposite. It's probably se- yeah, 70, 30, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. If not more. If not more. I would imagine. I would imagine. It took a while to get there, but not too long. What, what do you think you, in that process, what do you think you learned the most building something from scratch, cutting edge, what, from an entrepreneur standpoint, from a business standpoint, from a producer standpoint, mm-hmm. what do you think you, you learned from that? Well, the most, I, I, I just took it all in. Yeah. I mean, the thing about radio, which was so great, um, one of the things I loved about it so much is it's all you. All you do is, boom, you're turning on the microphone and go. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to answer to anybody, really. Yeah. Um, except maybe after or before. Right, right. right. <laughs> Once you're in there, you're in there. <laughs> right. You are the gatekeeper. In right. TV, it's a team. It's a team. Total team effort. Okay. So um, you really have to communicate. So that may have been, coming from your radio days, going into that, that had to be hard. Because you were, you were not, that wasn't, I mean, um, that had to be difficult. It wasn't for me. Okay. It wasn't, um, it was just, uh, there was uh, a learning curve. There okay. was certainly a learning curve. Okay. Um, but we had such a group of dedicated people and what's yeah. nice was it really was the core three it really was yeah. lou parker yeah. louise and myself right. we were the ones putting in 12 13 hour days okay looking at each other you know laughing hysterically after hours just right. because we were punchy and we were you know yeah you have to have fun yeah when yeah, you're yeah, putting yeah, in yeah, that yeah. much time yeah and we had the love of the game um so it, I was lucky in the fact that it was just the three of us, not a major production where, you know, you're dealing with 10, 20, 30 people. Yeah. So that could get old really quickly. It's just tough because yeah. you have to, you know, every, you have to have a lot of meetings. Right. Yeah. We didn't have to. We were all looking at each other all day, every day. I love it. 
So um, then, you know, obviously, you, 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 net, today, you have a couple of companies. You have a, a media company, mm-hmm. right? You do video. You do consulting, right? I used to do that. You know yeah. what? Again, it's follow the money. I found that, uh, God, I could tell you stories about, yeah, doing PR and you yeah. know, flying to L.A. and New York and getting people on uh, major TV shows. Yes. Things of yes. that nature. Um, but I found that the real money's in voiceovers. So I've just been doing voiceover work. Okay. Yeah. Lately. So tell me so tell me about voiceover. What like voiceover work, commercials. I know I've heard a yeah. couple of your commercials TV that you've and done. radio. Okay. It's mostly automotive advertising because that's okay. where the money's at. So okay. I do a lot of uh, luxury like Porsche. Yeah. The Porsche Exchange. That's um, cool. And by the way, it is Porsche. I heard you say Porsche earlier. It's oh, okay. It's Porsche. It's all right. It's a comment. Hey, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's Porsche. There is no substitute. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, and I got to say that line too. Isn't that cool? That's cool. Yeah. That's very so, cool. So, and uh, Audi and, uh, you know, a lot of luxury cars, Lexus, et cetera. Yeah. But then I also do, uh, with a little different style, I'll do Hyundai, which is a little more fun. Yes. Yeah. Hyundai. Um, or um, Honda, I do a lot of Honda. A lot of Honda. Yeah, a lot yeah. of Honda. They like that friendly voice. Right. So, um, <laughs> I yeah, love and, it. And all, all, all different brands. Okay. Uh, but that's not to say I don't do other things too. I mean, I do a lot of medical stuff here oh. in San Antonio. Okay. I do a tennis shop here in San Antonio. First really? serve tennis, yeah. First serve tennis, that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's right, yeah. Yeah. So, so you do their TV. voiceover for their, like, their videos? Yeah, for their TV spots. So oh. if you ever watch, if you're a tennis fan, you ever watch the French Open or yeah. Wimbledon or whatever, Yeah. They're, they run a big schedule. So you'll okay. Know, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. What is, go back to probably the coolest voiceover that you've ever got a chance to do. Tell me about it. The one that took me global was, uh, was fun. Uh, it was for an allergy uh, capsule. Something odd like that. Yeah. yeah. So it was for an allergy capsule, if I remember, yeah. um, for a company. I don't know where they were based out of, but they, they told me that that these spots were running all over the country, wherever they had these capsules, yeah. um, that it, it wasn't something that they were marketing to the general public. They were marketing it to um, like allergists and okay. things like that. Okay. Uh, or people who do clinical trials, things of that nature, where they would put a subject into this, this pod. Okay. And then they would inject, you know, psh, they'd send in the allergens. <laughs> And they would oh see, gosh. you know, what the person is allergic to and right. this, this type of thing. And uh, so they needed one of these, you know, it was like a corporate video, yeah. if you will, or something okay. they would use at a trade show, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so, and there aren't many of these pods in the, in the world. There's, yeah. you know, maybe 10 or something like that. But, yeah. but they, the company told me, wherever there's a pod, that's where you are. So they told me that there was one in Milan, Italy. So I oh, said, oh, that's cool. does that mean I can say I'm global now? They You're said, global. absolutely, you yes. can. So, so that was the first, you know, first chance I did something outside the continental U.S. That's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. All right, now, Joe, tell me about singing. I, like I said, we've hired you for several events. I appreciate The Sinatra that. of South Texas. That's and my that's, passion. That's the that's passion. My, that's my passion project. Real. Not that I don't love what I do because right. I love voiceovers as well. I mean, yeah. what's, what's better than that? You wake up, you get a script, yeah. you do the script, you send it out, and you go on about your day. So right. I'm always on call. That's my day job. Okay. But then at night, yeah. I'm a singer as well. I, yeah. I love to sing, and I love the, the genre of music I do is yeah. pop, jazz, and swing. Right. And pop jazz just means popular jazz tunes, songs that like you would it. know. The Great yep. American Songbook. That's right. Um, show tunes. Uh, Sinatra. Jazz yeah. standards. Yeah. So, yeah, Sinatra and yeah. Tony Bennett and Nat King Cole and Mel Torme and Ella Fitzgerald and all those songs that you know, they've all done them. Those are all yeah. song stylists. Right. They all put their own spin on them. And that's what I try to do. I try to put my own spin on them and bring them into the modern era, bring them into yeah. the current day and make them fun yeah. and, um, and have them sound great. You know, when you listen to some of those old Sinatra tunes, right. you can tell that it's a dated recording. Right. When I'm out there doing it live, you're hearing state-of-the-art audio you know, right. live coming right from me. With the, and typically you do a three-piece. 
right? For yeah, like smaller, a, for right? smaller, more intimate things. Yeah. I know we've done that with you. Yeah, it's a it's a trio, so it's a piano, a double, big double bass, and yeah. then myself on vocal. Okay, got it. But we usually do a full band, which we just add drums. So ah, it's got a, it. It's a big, uh, you know, it's a big deal to have a drummer. Yeah, it adds a lot. So biggest event you've played, most people. Well, I'm. You you referenced me as the Sinatra of South Texas. I'm yeah. going to be the Sinatra of San Antonio and uh, pardon me uh, of San Diego. Really, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's awesome. I got hired to do a corporate gig out there. So for eight hundred nice. eight hundred people. Congratulations. So thank you. How thank they you. find you? They found me here. Yeah. I I did a, a an event for them um, downtown. Okay. at the Grand Hyatt. Okay. They ended up loving me so much, they hired me to, to perform for them in Houston. And then they said, we want to hire you for about 12 dates all around the country in 2018. So we're wow. starting. Wow. I know, I know. It's, that's stinking cool. That's how it's supposed to happen. Yeah, that's, that's, that that's was it. The, again, that was the goal. Yeah, that's so, it. So we start with San Diego in a couple of weeks. That's super cool. Yeah. And so you, uh, uh, you, according to this, you've been doing that for about seven years, kind of like yeah, full time, seven, right? Seven or eight. Yeah. But, but obviously you had that passion to sing before that. Did you I just did. not let it out? Did you just not want people to know? Well, I was always kind of a frustrated musician and I did things on the air. When I was on the air, I, I always would record uh, parody songs. Okay. Is what they were. Yeah, 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 yeah. Little bits. But, but they would always go to number one. Really? I mean, they would be the number one song in the market. We would outsell, you know, we'd print up 1,500 copies. Oh, my god. We'd do goodness. a signing at a mall. One time I showed up at a mall. This was in Milwaukee. Yeah. And there was a line as the length of the mall. And it was around Christmas time. So yeah. I thought, oh, these people are here to see Santa Claus. Yeah. No, they were there to see me. Holy cow. And get a copy of the CD. Of this parody song. Right. And have me sign Do it. Do you remember the name of that song? Are you kidding? Of course. What's the name of the song? It was song? a parody of Will Smith's Miami. No And it was way. called Milwaukee. Stop so it. So it was kind of like my love letter to, to the city. Is this available anywhere? It is. It, you can find it on YouTube if you look. Gabe, really, if you look really hard. We have to find <laughs> a bit of the song for the yeah, podcast. Yeah. Party by the lake when the summer gets hot, when the snow falls, everybody shovels a lot. Welcome to Milwaukee. You're coming to Milwaukee. So I didn't put it up there. Some fan put it up. Somebody there put it up and there. And did a terrible, you know, some terrible video. <laughs> um. So we can make it better. We can yeah, make I it know, better. I yeah. Know you will. That's fantastic, yeah. man. That, so, but so that, that happened a lot of places. So you, but but now, do you think you were doing that kind of undercover because you, you know, the parody is kind of like a way to do it, but you're not really, you know, you're you're, you're kind of doing it on the sly, right? Well, it just, it, I mean, I grew up as a fan of great great parody songs. Okay, uh, you know, there's. It, there's it's either good or it's not. Right. Like, who said that? Tuscanini? You can right. say that about music in general. Right. I, I'll listen to anything. I'll listen to rap. Yeah. If it's good, right. it's either right. good or it's not. Right. Um, but so, you know, a good parody song is is entertaining. Yes. It's It still has all the great things that a, a good song has. Yes. You know, it's still melodic. You can still listen to it. Right. You can still dance to it. Right. I did the same thing in Chicago. It was the number one most requested song for the year. <laughs> oh my we did, gosh. you know, the countdown of the most requested songs at the end of the year. Right, right, right. The program right. director calls me and says, Joe, you have the number one most requested song. What year was song. this? 96, 97, it, it, something. Tell like me that. the parody song. What was the name of it? Um, the real song was Time Marches On by Tracy Lawrence. It okay. was a country song. Okay. I did a parody about Michael Jordan, of course. Again, oh, it's, it's about yeah. who you pick, yeah, you, you, what you pick. You when, know how to do it. Yeah. You know how to do where, it. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You know how to do it. And, it was and that was, Michael wait, Jordan. so 96, it was a third championship, right? It was called Mike Marches On. Oh, my goodness. Instead of Time Marches On, it was about, okay, about Michael Jordan possibly we gotta, we gotta going. We got to get this We got to get this one, too, because I'm a huge Jordan possibly fan. Possibly going to, <laughs> to New York. Right. Right. What was going to happen, you know, when the bull, if the Bulls were to break down? Right. Because we just didn't know. There was a lot of questions. You know, because this is are. the third championship, right? I the, think so. The second three peat, ninety six. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, I have three questions that I have, ask every guest. Okay, okay. I knew this and was to, to wrap this up. Yep. All right. Tim Ferriss wrote a book, Tools of Titans. Have you heard of this book? No. Uh, it, it, it's this. I'm busy reading scripts. I don't get to read books. That's all right. As much as I want. Yeah, so Tools of <laughs> Titans. So what he did is he sent out to like 
a ton of people this like list of questions and said, hey, can you answer it? And then I want to put this out in a book so that people can kind of like take all of this wisdom and kind of distill it down to one book, all of the people's answers. Okay. okay? okay. First question. And they're great questions, man. Again, this is, this is not mine. Uh, this is, excuse me, the book is Tribe of Mentors. Tribe of Mentors. Tribe of Mentors, by excuse Tim me. Ferris. By Tim Ferriss. All right. First question is, Think of are you, do you, are you a read, do you like to read? Are you? Are you I love to read. Yeah, but I, you just don't have the time right now. You know, so much of my time is spent trying to catch up on the news because I have a yeah. I have a six year old daughter. Right. Um, so plus I am reading scripts all the time, right. or I'm learning new you know new material for my music act. Got it. All the time. So yeah. Audio fan. What do you mean? Audio books. Yeah. Because um, some people like it, some people don't. I just don't have the time. I just, okay. you know, the commute time isn't as long here. Maybe when I'm flying to San Diego, I'll get to listen to something. Okay, cool. So, Fair enough. Yeah. So here's the question. It, think of a book that you have read okay. in the past. Okay. Is there a book that you are like, you know what? If I were to give someone a book, this is the book that I would give and why? Wow. I've gotten so many great things uh, from so many books. Just to narrow it down to one is it could be two. almost impossible. It could be two. <laughs> Even two is impossible. Well, let's it's start the with impactful. the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What's the, what's the proper thing to say here? Yeah, Let me think. No proper. Uh, just your, your, your opinion. What's the, the one that know, impacted you the most? Um, I, yeah, I'll give you one. Okay. Um, it's about reversing the aging process, ah. which is something we need to sit down and talk about. I, I know you're a big runner. Yes. Running is the wrong thing to do because running yeah. accelerates, accelerates is the aging right? process. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And I know I'm blowing your mind right now. I can yeah. see it in well, your I, eyes. I've heard it before. You're passionate no, no, about no, I've, it. I've heard it before. That doesn't make yeah. it wrong. I mean, yeah. I know you love it and some yeah. people get a high from it Yeah. and it's just, they dig it. That's their makeup and yeah. they... It's a goal. It's an accomplishment. Yeah. I'm not raining on your parade. That's yeah, cool. no, I no, no. get it. I get yeah. it. But ultimately... Is this, does this book talk about the running aspect in it? No. No, it okay, got it. Okay. It, it may. It may touch on it a little bit. Okay. It certainly talks about uh, diet, but what it really talks about is the five ancient rites. Okay. R-I-T-E-S. Okay. To reverse the aging process. Okay. Um, the name of the book is escaping me. It's by Thomas Elder, I believe. Okay. Maybe it'll come to me. Okay. Um, but that's what it's about. Okay. And it, it talks about um, diet. Yeah. And how to eat. Yeah. How your body digests food. Okay. One quick. I'll just give you one quick tip. Yeah. Eat the wet stuff first. Oh, interesting. When you sit down to eat. Yeah. For instance, start with your salad. Eat all your salad first. Interesting. Eat all your vegetables first. Okay. Then get to the protein. Okay. The meat. Okay. Um, kind of warms up the stomach, I guess. Is that, is uh, that the kind I, of this? You know, I can't even yeah. get into it. Ultimately, we all eat too much food, Tomas. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've cut that. The like, ideal yeah. thing is one meal a day. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Think of all the money and time you would save. Yeah. And, you know, you're so, say, you, so you must do intermittent fasting then. Yes, sir. You're an intermittent faster. Yes. I can tell. How can you? Not tell? in a bad way. Yeah, that. because you're lean as, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're very lean. You know what I mean? In a good Sorry way. Sorry about that. <laughs> He's flexing on us. <laughs> but you're very lean in a good way. Yeah. Because there's, there's lean and then there's like, oh my gosh, are you, have you eaten anything in a couple? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Right? So there's Get a difference. Get that guy to a sandwich. Right, right, right. There's a difference. Yeah. So that's one of the things I've been looking into is mm -hmm. doing that in the morning. You know, I've heard of the whole drink a cup of coffee kind of intermittent oh, yeah. fast, right? Yeah, yeah. And then work out. I've heard all of... I've, I've, bulletproof. And, yeah, exactly. I like bulletproof. bulletproof. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard of that too. All right, next question. Okay, well, and, so anyway, oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the book. Okay. And it teaches you these rites. It's five ancient... The ancient... Oh, gosh, the, the book's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. The ancient healing... Uh, something like that. Okay. I'll, I'll let you know. We'll get, um, we'll get it. Okay. We'll get it. Um, so anyway, it's about these five moves that you can do. Some people okay. call it... Uh, Himalayan yoga or something okay. like that. So it's these five power moves that you do yeah. that the more you do them, you start slow. You start with yeah. three reps of each right. Interesting. And, and then you build it up. You add two a week yeah. until you get to 21 of okay. each. And you 
reverse the aging process. Interesting. Now, some people think, ooh, is this, it must be real physically challenged. Yeah. It ends up becoming mentally challenging. Ah. Uh, That's the hard part. Yeah. It's really intense. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. I like it. There's I a like lot it. to learn in that book. Okay. All right. Next question. Um, and I, I, I bet I know the answer to this. Uh, think of something that you've purchased in the last six months, a hundred dollars, <laughs> as he's pointing at it, <laughs> that, that, that is just something that is blown you away that you love. Um, I pointed at my headphones because yeah. you know the story of these headphones. Yeah. Uh, they're brand new. The, the ones I had prior to these were, I got them in 1996 when I got to Chicago. Uh, that, they lasted doing that the country. long. Wow, that's they crazy. lasted that long. And these are the tools of my trade. So yeah. to get a new pair was like, oh, these are my babies. Yeah. But um, what I really got um, that recently that I, this is, I'm just going to add some fun. Please. I got a bubble machine. A bubble machine. Yes. And I added it to my live act, my singing act. Okay. Okay. I was even thinking with your daughter. I was thinking like the bubble machine. So you <laughs> have to blow fun. bubbles. Well, yeah, that, we're going to do that too, but she loves that. So you added this to your act. I added to the act. So okay. it's like, it's like, you know, when you go see an act and there's fog machines. You know, yes. Well, this is sim simple. We're a lot yeah. smaller. We're not doing, you know, Maroon 5 at the at and Right. Stuff. We are, oh, by the way, it was last night. Did you go to that? A lot no. of people went to that. Okay. No. So uh, as we record this. So um, yeah, it's just a, you know, it's a little added effect. Okay. That's fun. I that love it. That fills the stage or depending on where I point it, yeah. uh, the dance floor. But I found out that the dance floor gets <laughs> really slippery. So you're uh, looking at a lawsuit there, pal. Right. Yeah. You got to blow so that in a certain direction. I do it only over the stage, <laughs> only if it's a carpeted, right? Like, a, right. Uh, where did I do it? Sunset Station is, is carpeted. We did a wedding yes. there not too long ago. Yes. So, and boy, if there's kids, they run. Oh, to it's instant. The it's instant. So, yeah. But this past weekend, uh, we were at the Elon Hotel, yeah. which is nothing but the hardwood ballroom oh, yeah. floor. So I only did it on the stage, and I only did it during the bride's dance with her father. Uh, so the father-daughter dance. Smart. But you can just see people's eyes go, look, look at the yeah. bubbles. It's like yeah. a magical thing. It's just a simple thing, yeah, but yeah. it's just effective, and it's one more thing that I do that sets me apart from other people who try, right. to, try to do what I do. So if somebody wants to hire you, yes. what's the easiest way to get in contact to hire you as a singer? Thank you. It's, yeah. Just go to my website, which is joeshow.com. Joeshow.com. I saw that. Joe yeah. Show. People say, wow, you got joeshow.com? Yeah, I did it a long time ago. Yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. That's it. Those are the questions? No, I got one, one last more. question. I thought there was one more. Okay. Yep. One last question. Joe and this show. is, com. you're an advertising guy, so you're going to like this question. Okay. All right. And I... I'm, I I'm kind of interested to see what you're going to say to this. So billboards. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by billboards. I love billboards. I grew up, again, in the big city in right. Chicago where there's billboards everywhere. Right. Well, I would imagine you probably have been on a few billboards with the radio stuff. Did you ever? Did they ever do any big <sighs> billboard stuff? I, we did mostly TV stuff. TV, okay. I don't think we ever did a okay. billboard. Yeah. Just not with my face on it. I remember. We, do you remember Kid Craddock and all oh, the billboards they I had remember? here? Yes. Holy cow. Well, they were owned by, uh, they were on a Clear Channel station here. There you go. That makes sense. And Clear Channel owned all those boards. Yeah. So when they didn't have someone to buy, yeah. they just would throw up, you know, why not support our radio station? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, well, it had a big impact. I mean, because that was that was big back in the day. All right, so billboard. So think of billboard. Num the first part of this question is think of if there were any billboard that you could get to put a message on it, right? Think mm -hmm. of location where you'd want this. Where it's this all billboard. about location, and it's all about right hand reads. Remember that. Okay. So again, advertising. Right. Family, I like that. Right hand yeah. reads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So think of location, but then I want you to think what message would you want to put if you owned a billboard and you could put a message up there for the city of San Antonio, for anybody that came to San Antonio? And, and this message could be, I mean, it could be motivational. It could be, you know, it could be thought provoking. Whatever it is that you want to put on the billboard, what would you put on it and where would you want that billboard? About San Antonio? It could be about anything. Could be about anything. anything. I just have a blank canvas. You have a blank canvas. You have oh, a billboard. These questions are so. Uh, <laughs> you could have given me a heads up here. Yeah. No, I didn't want to. <laughs> well, it's hard. I mean. Yeah. 
as an entrepreneur, I would want to promote my business. You know, everybody, everybody dreams of having a billboard of themselves. And yeah. in that case, you know, you keep it simple. Yeah. What do they say? Um, you know, four words or less, or, yeah. you know, sometimes it's, uh, look at just do it. There you go. All the yeah. great ad campaigns were three or four. Right. Um, that's why the Sinatra of South Texas says it all. I'm not yeah, comparing yeah, yeah. myself to Francis Albert. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, wouldn't yeah, yeah, be yeah. so bold as to do that. Yeah. Some people do. Yeah. Um, it's just a marketing thing. It lets people know in as few words yeah. as possible what I do. Yep. Oh, I get it. Yep. I know instantly what that guy does. It's yep. not, I'm not doing, and it's not an impersonation of Frank. Right. Right. Um, although sometimes that's fun to do. Right. You know, um, it's just the style. Yeah. Oh, I, I like that. I want to know more. Yeah. It's nice to know that that guy exists in San Antonio. People don't yeah. expect it. Everybody knows about, you know, mariachis and the river walk and Tejano and Conjunto yeah. and whatever. Yeah. And that's great. But yeah. the city is so much more. Yeah. So is that a, did I, is that a that's cop good. out? No, not at all. But in, and if, if there were a, um, I do love the billboards that say, thank God. Or, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I yeah. mean, there's all sorts of fun things you can. But if you, if there were a, like your favorite quote, w would there be a quote or something that came to mind? It, 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 again, I had a feeling you would ask me my favorite quote. I or, came prepared. Oh, okay. Yeah, I came prepared. I'm ready. And this is kind of. How would you I, put this on the billboard? I might. Okay. It's kind of how I go about my business. All right. The approach to what you do. Oh, now I'm going to forget the quote. Here we go. Yeah. Um, the approach, I really am going to forget the quote. That's so funny. Uh, the approach to what you do um, comes out in the results. I really am misquoting it here. That's okay. Um, the, I approach, get the... the approach to what you do results in what you get. That's the quote. Ah. The approach to what you do results in what you get. I love that. So if you prepare, yeah. simply the act of preparing yeah. for my voiceover or live singing. Yeah. I really do go in and create a set list that yeah. I think is appropriate yeah. for the event based yeah. on up tempo, mid tempo, ballads, yeah. um, songs about love, you know. Um every song is about love, let's be honest. But yeah. uh, what key? I don't want the songs to be in the same key as I go from song to song to song. I want it That's to smart. to change. Um, plus it gets me excited about having a new set list. Yeah. Not everybody does that. Some yeah. guys are they like, just do the same one. Yeah. <laughs> the same old, the same old, the same yeah. old. And you can tell the musicians, their heart isn't into it. Yeah. There's no excitement. Yeah. So I like um, that. Or That's even good. if it's a script, you know, circling the key words that I want to hit, it comes out yeah. in the performance. Yep. It's so true. The approach to what you do results in what you get. I hey, love that. Like you said. Yeah. Go to bed wearing your workout gear. All day, every day. And then, boom, you wake up and you're ready to go. That's, that's right. That's an approach to what you do right there. Yeah, absolutely. Because, it, it, you know, the, I found that the days when I don't do it, I don't wake up in the mindset mm -hmm. or the frame of mind to actually even go work to out. To hit the ground running. And, 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 and it, I mean, literally every time. Like, if I do not wear my clothes, it's really hard for me to get my brain turned on. But because I do it and I make it, like, I, I will get home from work after everything, and I will literally kind of get my clothes ready, shower, whatever, put my clothes on, and I'll be ready to walk out of the door working out. Do you ever get into funk? Morning. Of course you do. Everybody does. Yeah. Just the day to day. Do you ever change up your routine? Like literally just get out of bed a different way. Um, Drive to work a different way. I will run a different way. Run I'll a different change, way. I'll okay. change my direct, like, like this morning. Perfect example. I did four point something miles. I came out of my neighborhood and I typically run the same pattern. Mm -hmm. And I literally told myself, I cannot run the same way this morning. Good I have you. to do a different pattern because I thought I don't want to go that way. It was weird. I don't, it was just this thing in my mind. But I ended up <laughs> creating a new path, uh -huh. a new area that I ran through. And I was like, I like this better. Good. For whatever reason. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, but, you know, I'm kind of one of those guys that gets up out of bed. I'm very, like, I want to go. Like, I'm ready to go. I know that. I can't you. sit. I can't sit or lay in the bed. Like, you know, you, know, you wake up and it's kind of, I'm just going to lay here. I can't do it. It's you weird. You know, you're a motivational speaker, but you're a motivational guy. And let me just tell you, just 
hanging around you. You don't have to say a word. Yeah. I, I get motivated just with your energy. Oh, thank you. Just like a contact, uh, you know, contact yeah. high, if you will. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just in your moves. Yeah. Just in the way you speak. Yeah, Just in the you. way you look. You're awake. You're present. Appreciate I mean, that. I could go on, but it's... Yeah. Um, it comes across. I just want you to know. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Well, listen, Joe, listen, we, I'm going to get you out of here. So I know you got another event, but I want to thank you. I really appreciate you being a part of TM3 Impact. TM3 Impact. That's I love right. The name. This is a show I where. I see your billboards. You know, exactly. You know, this is a show <laughs> where we, we want to interview special people. If you know somebody special, if you know somebody that we need to talk to, let us know. We'd love to reach out to them to have them We're on our show. We're not going to take calls. No calls. No calls today. <laughs> <laughs> Although that, that might be something cool to do later on to try that. But again, Joe, we really appreciate Thank your you. time. Thank and you. again, if you are looking for someone to, to do an amazing performance, I'm serious. I'm not just trying to gas up Joe. Every single time we've hired him, people have loved what he does and the trio that he brings. And it, uh, I, so that's, I mean, that's all I can say. Go to Joe show dot com joe show dot com and trust me you will not be disappointed with what he brings thank you joe thank you Tom. appreciate tomas. it Sorry. hey tomas <laughs> it's all good <laughs>